The next tutorial that's going to be launching on Video Copilot is going to deal with creating dynamic bar graphs. By doing it in After Effects with some time remapping and expressions, you can control how those bar graphs look without having to re-render them, say, out of a 3D program. Let's just take a look at how that example is going to work and how it's set up. Okay, here we are in After Effects. We're going to take a look at the upcoming bar graph tutorial. And the idea is to take some footage of four completed bar graphs, or as many as you need, and animate them from being completely off to being completely on in a single pass. And that way, in After Effects, we can manipulate each one individually and can control their values without having to re-render it in a 3D program. And with graph animations, information is always changing. So here we have the setup scene. And it's broken up. Each graph has been excluded from the uh, comp and individually cut out. And the reflections have also been included so that the animation will include them. Let's say you find out in 2009 that there were actually 900 robot malfunctions instead of 400. Well, our graph only goes up to 500. If we were doing this manually, we need to reanimate all of these and reset the calibration points so that they match. But with this system, all we have to do is go into the chart controls, set the high value to say 1,000, and watch when I hit enter all of the values of the graph automatically calibrate to the high value. So for example, 400 is a little bit below the half point and 100 is about one tenth. And so this really helps because then you don't have to worry about values changing. You can just constantly be updating the information and not having to restart from scratch every time. So let's go into that graph for number one and set the value to 900, hit enter, and so now we have a well calibrated graph. Everything is controllable. It's all animatable. And then when you play it back, they all animate up to the position where their value is set. Okay, so bar graphs aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but there are a lot of cool possibilities when you're dealing with numbers and decimals that can translate into other projects inside of After Effects. Now, on to a very exciting part about this uh, video update. We're going to be taking a look at our new plugin, Optical Flares. It's a creative lens flare studio that allows you to build, customize, and uh, pretty much do anything with lens flares. Now, instead of trying to show you every feature in Optical Flares, we're going to focus on two key features. And that way, we can keep this short and uh, you know save some of the mysteries for a later time. So let's take a look at the Optical Flares interface for the first time. Okay, so here we are in After Effects. I've got optical flares loaded up over our background image, and we're going to take a look at this very powerful plugin. Now, here are the parameters that allow you to animate and control where the flare is in your comp, etc. Now, the key to optical flares is the Creative Lens Flare Studio, otherwise known as our interface. So, in order to get to the interface, we just click on the options. And a big old interface pops up, and it's got a familiar look. There's a lot to it. And the thing about interfaces is they're very difficult to code because there's so many complex intricacies of how things work. Um, let me just go ahead and walk through the interface. So here we have our preview where we can click, drag, check our lens flare out. We've got a few settings that we can control the look. And below that, we have our object stack. And this stack is where we store all of the elements that make up a lens flare. And you can create them from scratch, use presets. A lot of cool controls here. We have hide, we have solo, and of course, we even have a delete function. And if you delete something, there's even a little animation. So we really put a lot of work into making this interface fast, robust, and uh, frankly, easy to use. We call it a creative lens flare studio because we want you to focus on the look of the lens flare and not worrying about, uh, you know, fighting with an interface. So we can also undo. So we'll bring that back and uh, we're back in business and we can select elements, we can duplicate elements, even shortcuts like control D um, work to be able to duplicate things in the object stack. So very cool. 
And we could talk about the uh, the plugin actually for a very long time because there are some settings here where there's all sorts of uh, complex settings and really cool things that make amazing lens flares. But instead of focusing on that, I'm going to focus just on a couple of features. There's going to be time to get into those details a little bit later. Right now, let's just take a look at a couple of cool key features. So first of all, we've got an option to show the background. So right now, the lens flare looks great on black, but how does it look on our background image? Well, I'll just turn that on. And now we can move our lens flare around, see exactly what it looks like. And also, if you set up a foreground layer or an obscure layer, it will actually register inside of the preview window. So that's very helpful. The idea is to do as much as possible inside of the interface so that you don't have to keep opening it and closing it to get your lens flare to look right. And oftentimes a lens flare will look good on black, but uh, maybe not so much. So that's important. But what about the detail? You can't always see what the elements look like. Well, we've got the preview pop out. So we click on that and bam, we get a big preview window and we have a live big preview of what our lens flare looks like. Now you can also move it off to the side so you have more room for your object stack or close it down and we're back to a compact size. Now that's the show background feature. We also have another top feature and that's the four three guides. You turn that on, wow look at that, it's like a box with a target, no I'm kidding. But that's helpful but the other feature I want to show you is the preset gallery. So you can make lens flares, you can save lens flares, but what about loading lens flares? Well you come over here, show presets, click on that and bam we have a preset browser that opens up. There's tons of presets and you want to load it? No problem. Just click on it. It loads it. It's live. Come back, try another one out, just click on it, just click on it and you're trying out lens flares. Um, very easy to do. After you try it out over here, you can also just hit tab on your keyboard and that brings open the last browser window that was open and it even keeps the scroll position. So now we have user made preset. So you click on that and here we have all the custom presets that you've made. You can also load the built-in ones, edit it, change it, resave it, and uh, re-access it. So here we have just a bunch of different presets. Again, just click on them to load them, and we'll just hit tab to open it. And I want to show you one other quick feature before we end. I want to end this on a, on a high note. So here we have a string light preset. So I'll load that. And I'll open it up pretty big here. And it's pretty cool. And if I move it to the outside of the frame, you see it just kind of goes outside of the frame. Nothing too fancy. This lens flare is made up of static objects. But let's close that. But let's go back in here. And I'm going to load the trigger preset. And this one looks pretty similar. However, if we move it to the edge of the frame, watch what happens all of the light starts doing some uh, interesting things. So it kind of sparkles, it kind of shoots out, and uh, you know, it's very dynamic. The key here is we've set up rules, triggering that makes the lens flare do different things. So you don't have to keyframe those, it's all self-animating effects. And it's the difference between a static lens flare and a lens flare that actually comes alive. So that's one of the key things We'll talk about that in a later uh, presentation, but I just wanted to uh, show you the interface. Well, hopefully you guys can see all of the crazy work that's went into that plugin and the level of detail that uh, you know we're committed to in offering uh, these type of plugins. You know, building a plugin like this from the ground up is uh, it's been a lot of work, and you know, every time we study lens flares, we see something that's happening. And we want to be able to recreate it. We want to be able to offer that feature so that we can build the lens flares that are realistic and dynamic and not just uh, static. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Also, I just want to say thanks to our sponsor, Coca-Cola, um, for supporting us for doing these video shows. So I just wanted to uh, you know, put out a quick shout out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the new format and everything that we're uh, trying to put together here on the uh, Video Copilot show. It'll start making sense. Anyway, I'm Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.